Is vertical farming the future? It might just be the only solution left. Did you know that at least half of the Earth's topsoil has been damaged thanks to humans? Vertical farming, or indoor farming using LED illumination and carefully regulated growing and nutrition systems in place of sunlight and rain. Let's discover more about this new spin on farming and why we need it. First up, why is it all the buzz these days? The population of our world is increasing more quickly than we can feed it. We'll need to feed 10 billion people with less water and land available over the course of the next 30 years, all while the climate climate is changing quickly. Do you realize how scary that is? With less resources available, producing safe food will require more inventive and dependable methods in order to feed the world. Thank God for agriculture, the oldest and most flexible sector of the global economy, and one that we've sort of cracked how to tweak to fit our rising demands. We might gain some insights on how to influence the future of our food system if we look back at some of humankind's oldest gardening techniques. Vertical farming is very effective and an environmentally friendly method of food production. Don't believe us? Get this, in a comparison to a conventional farm, Nordic Harvest claims to use 250 times less water. So how do we do it? The secret to great efficiency is automation. In order to monitor crops and establish ideal growing conditions, vertical farms use a variety of technologies, including software, robotics, and data science. Controlling the temperature, humidity, CO2, and light is a huge part of this. Also, this type of regulated environment lessens the impact on the environment by reducing the need for pesticides and all those nasty things that cause pollution. And here's the best part of it all. Since vertical farms are not weather dependent, they may grow fresh produce all year round. Do you know what that means? Mangoes all year, baby. Or yeah, whatever your favorite fruits and veggies are. Now, while using the same amount of space, we can accommodate many more crops to grow upward greatly increasing yield per acre. Since vertical farms don't require soil, they're not restricted to a particular region. Instead, hydroponically, aeroponically, or even aquaponically plants can grow. By mimicking the role of the sun, these farms use LED lights all day long. The lights are connected to a central operating system, which regulates both the illumination intensity and when the lights turn on and off. Automation makes it possible to provide customized plant care at scale. From the instant a seed is planted, the operating system keeps track of everything that grows in farms. The operating system then instructs farmers on how long that seed should take to germinate, how to move it into the grow room, and when it's ready for harvest. Ta-da! There you have it, a perfect harvest every time. Next, let's explore if there are any trade-offs. Like most things in life, there's gonna be a catch. If it sounds too good to be true, it might be. <sighs> Let's talk about the downsides of vertical farming. The first issue is high energy usage brought on by lack of water and natural sunlight. Electricity must be used to give both of these inputs, which may not be the best option depending on the area. The second issue is cost, which gets higher due to system equipment requirements as well as energy consumption. Basically, the biggest barrier to vertical farming is cost. Rain and sun are both free, but you know what's not? Running complicated growing systems, software, or LED lighting. While some buildings use electricity generated by wind turbines, experts fear that vertical farms powered by fossil fuels may actually make the problem of climate change worse rather than better. And that's not even all. It might be costly to purchase urban real estate to construct a vertical farm. Are these factors we're willing to bear for the bigger picture? But hear this. The global market for vertical farming is predicted to soar from 5.5 billion in 2020 to almost 20 billion by 2025. So what's the verdict? Imagine popping by your neighborhood supermarket on a chilly January day just to buy harvested lettuce, fragrant basil, juicy sweet strawberries, and bright red tomatoes, all of which come from a nearby farm. Yep, vertical farming can do that. While the output of these farms alone wouldn't be sufficient to feed the entire population, indoor vertical farming offers special advantages to the challenges we'll come across in feeding an expanding planet. To build a more robust, sustainable food system, traditional and indoor farmers must keep cooperating and work around kinks. There are solid reasons to believe that indoor farming will play a significant role in the future, even though this new system can seem lavish in comparison to the old McDonald version of farming we grew up with. By having operations closer to the point of consumption, this new frontier in farming allows farmers to increase output, consume fewer resources, and cut back on transportation. Don't know about you, but we're sold. And now, moving on to other news in the food and farming industry. Wondering where the world's largest vertical farm is? These guys do nothing on a small scale. Dubai's Bustanica, the biggest vertical farm in the world, covers more than three hectares and saves 95% more water than a typical farm. The city often makes people think of extravagance and luxury, but in this case, vertical farms are quite the initiative that is progressively changing the way we think about food production, not a record-breaking skyscraper or a ski slope inside a mall. In Arabic, the word Bustanica means your garden or your orchard. Their goal is to produce a 
a lot of vegetables, avoid the challenges of farming in the United Arab Emirates, and achieve levels of productivity and cost savings that are higher than those of traditional farms. Naturally, no cost has been spared in order to do this. With a system that conserves land, energy, and water, a massive facility measuring around 30,600 square meters on three stories has been built to produce more than 1,000 tons of vegetables annually. That's 3,000 kilograms a day. Bustanica was launched with the help of a sizable investment, about 40 million from Emirates Crop One, the vertical farming division of the enormous Emirates Group. The hydroponic method, in which crops grow without soil, is the foundation of the promise. The largest farm of its sort, according to Emirates, replacing agricultural land with mineral solutions. None of this would be possible without the avoidance of pesticides, herbicides, and fungicides, which are now widely condemned by consumer advocacy groups. In order to prevent excessive consumption, water, the most valuable resource in the area, is carefully regulated and treated before being used in a closed circuit. As a result, if 317 liters are used to cultivate one kilogram of vegetables the traditional way, a hydroponic solution will only need 15 liters. This translates into yearly water and energy savings of more than 250 million liters and nearly 1,000 megawatts. Awesome work, guys. Next, let's find out how quickly jobs are opening up in the food sector. Everything's moving to tech. As the need grows for food production with a rise in population, more and more jobs are being created in the sector. According to data, less time was spent working at automation-related jobs at food producers in the second quarter than it was a year earlier. When they were taken offline, the jobs that were closed during Q2 had been available for an average of 18 days. This was a reduction from the comparable figure one year prior, showing that the necessary skill set for those occupations has gotten simpler to find recently. Companies that perform well and make automation investments now are deemed to be better prepared for the business environment of the future and better able to withstand unforeseen problems. The food industry had less difficulty filling these positions in the most recent quarter, and these businesses also had less difficulty filling industrial automation jobs than the general market, with ads running online for 48.6 less time on average than those for comparable positions across the entire jobs market. But there's also a dark side to this. As more and more things move to automation and greener alternatives like vertical farming, people in the sector are fearing for their jobs becoming redundant. And lastly, this Japanese vertical farming startup has all our attention. A Series A fundraising round for Spread, a Japanese vertical farming startup raised 4 billion Japanese yen. That's around $30 million, by the way. The company, which has its headquarters in Kyoto, Japan, raised money in the largest ever single fundraiser in the country's food technology industry. In 2007, Kamioka Plant, Spread's first vertical farm, went into operation. The business developed Techno Farm Kaihana, a cutting-edge automated vertical farm, in 2018. The startup sells its lettuce in 4,500 stores across Japan under the Vegetus brand, which it uses to make sustainable crops. The money will be utilized to create the technology for Techno Farm Fukuroi, Spread's new automated vertical farm, which will start operating in 2024. That's a wrap for this video. Do you think vertical farming is the future? Do the pros outweigh the cons for you? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.